Hi, my name is Nick, and this is my website, 10GIC.com. I picked this domain because I like the idea of the binary 1 and 0 making up the word logic. I thought that was pretty cool. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to get things set up, start editing your HTML and JavaScript file, initialize things, and get a game loop looping to uh, draw each frame of your game. In future videos, we're going to create a snake game, and I'll be showing you a lot of more kind of game dyna dynamics and elements. But for this video, we're just going to stick to getting things set up, and then of course, if you decide you don't want to go farther with a snake game and want to do your own thing, you'll be all set up to do that. So to get things set up, uh, the first thing that we're going to need to do is to create a folder on the hard drive. And in that folder, we'll need an HTML file. So I'm going to create this as snake.html. And I'm also going to create a folder called JS. And inside of that folder, I'm going to create a JavaScript file called snake.js. <coughs> Okay, now our folder has the files in the folder that it needs. So now you can open up any editor of your choice. Um, really anything that you're comfortable with should work just fine, even Notepad if that's what you'd like to use. What I like is Visual Studio, and I'm using Visual Studio 11 beta uh, because it's currently in beta, and I'm using Expressive version because it's free. The reason that I've chosen this is because Visual Studio 11 has some really good IntelliSense for JavaScript, and I find that very helpful. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the folder that we just created, and start editing this HTML file. The first thing I'm going to do is give it a doc type. I'm going to use the new HTML5 way of doing doc type. And I'll give it a meta tag for our character set, UTF-8. And then let's give this page a title. We're just going to call it Snake Game. OK, and in the body, we're going to use the canvas element. And I want to give this an ID so that we can refer to it inside of our JavaScript. Let's call it Snake Canvas. So this is where the entire game is going to take place, right inside of this Canvas element. Uh, there's really only one thing left to do, and that's to include our JavaScript file. So rather than typing it out, Visual Studio has this nice feature where I can just drag it and drop it. Uh, but we're just creating a script tag that has a you know, type of JavaScript and the location that we created. I'm going to save that, and we can move on to our JavaScript file. One of the things that Visual Studio does that is very nice is when you are creating a JavaScript file, it wants to provide an IntelliSense, but you know JavaScript files kind of stand on their own. Um, so it doesn't know anything about the HTML that we created, the DOM elements, the most importantly snake canvas element. But we can make it know about this by putting in a reference. And it's just a comment, but this reference will let Visual Studio know that hey, when I say that I want the snake canvas object, oh right, that's the the canvas element that I know about and then can provide IntelliSense for. So it's, that's a really nice feature. So I'm going to create some variables for this. One is for the canvas. And then CTX. Uh, we can use CTX to hold our 2D context of the canvas. 
And we don't have to do this, but it really makes things helpful if I create a width and a height as a variable that we can set. The reason that this makes things helpful is that uh, then later in the code, I can use these variables. And if I ever decide that, you know, 512 just isn't cutting it for me anymore and I want to do something different, I only have to change these variables. And I don't have to worry anything about, you know, all the different places that I might have put this 512 number in. And is it the right 512 number? Because I'll just refer to it using these variables. Uh, we could, you know, like I said, we could just include it here. Um, but then we wouldn't have this variable that holds it that allows us to make changes. Okay, so we have things set up and now we need to initialize things. So I'll create a function and we'll call it init. Inside of this initialization function, I'm going to grab that DOM element using document.getElementById. And then I'll just use the uh, snake canvas that we called the canvas object's ID. And now we have a handle on that. And so now I can set that width and height using the variables that we created. And it will resize it for us. Okay, now I'm going to take that CTX element, or variable, and set it equal to canvas dot get contacts, and then we here we want 2D. Um, the HTML5 spec does call for there being other context types, especially in the future, but for now, 2D is exactly what we want. Okay, that finishes up our initialization. And we'll just call this function. And if we were to run this right now, our canvas object would go from its default size to the 512 by 512. And we get a handle on this uh, canvas object, but we wouldn't really be doing anything yet. So the next thing we're going to do is create another function for our game loop. And I'm just going to call it game loop. Inside of this game loop, the first thing that I want to do is clear out our canvas object so that anything from, from the previous frame is, is gone. Uh, this way we can start each frame fresh. And I can do that by calling clear rect. And this function takes four parameters. The first two parameters are the x and y coordinate where we're going to start drawing the rectangle uh, that we're going to clear. So, since we want to clear the entire thing, uh, uh, we're going to start in the upper left-hand corner, which has a coordinate of 0, 0. And then the next two coordinates are just where do we want to end the rectangle. So that'd be the bottom right-hand corner, uh, which would be 512 by 512, but we're going to use those variables that we created just in case we ever change that. So, I'll get that in there. And if we were to run this right now, uh, it will run, but we're going to see really just nothing. Um, so here's our HTML file, and there's nothing. It's exactly what we would expect. So in order to at least see that we do have a canvas object and it has ref resized itself, uh, let's set a style on it. We could put a border in, but I think I'm going to go with a background color. And because this is going to ultimately be a snake game, we'll use some sort of green for grass or something. And I'll save that. And now when we refresh this, we'll see our canvas object. Okay. So we have our canvas object. We've initialized it. We've cleared it, or, or actually we didn't clear it because we didn't call this function, but that would have cleared it. 
but we're not looping through, so we're not actually doing anything. Um, so we want to loop through this. Now there's two different ways that I'm going to show you how to do that. The first way is to call set interval, and this parameter is going to be our function that we want to call repeatedly, which is going to be game loop. And the next parameter is how many milliseconds we want to wait before each call. So 1000 milliseconds is one second. So if we did that, we would call our game loop once a second or one frame per second. But that wouldn't be very good for a game. Um, so we could set this to 30, you know, and then we get 30 frames per second, which is certainly pretty good. Well, I'm going to set it to 60. So now we're going to call this every 60 seconds, but it's still not going to do anything other than clear out the canvas. So even though you're not going to want this probably as part of your game, let's do something a little bit interesting just so we can at least see that we are iterating through this loop and that things are updating. So I'm going to draw a line on the screen. The way to do that is to take CTX and tell it that we want to begin a path. And this reminds me a lot of an old program that I used when I was a child that was called Turtle. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with it, but it, it basically was just a triangle uh, that was called the Turtle. And you would move the Turtle uh, with different commands and draw shapes, and you kind of chain those, those commands together. And it was very much almost like an Etch-a-Sketch, except with an Etch-a-Sketch, you know, you've always got the line. You can't kind of lift it up and move. Um, and this reminds me just a lot of that, that program. Of course, if you don't know what I'm talking about, then, uh, well, just think of it this way. You have a cursor that you, you can move around the screen and, and draw things. And so that's what we're going to do is, is move that cursor. Let's move it to the, all the way to the left. And we'll go halfway down our page, which I guess we can say uh, 256. And now we're halfway down the page. And now we need to tell it where we want to draw a line to. So the first parameter, again, being x, we could put a number in here, but I actually don't want to put a number in. And the reason is because if I put a number in, we're just going to draw a line. And the very first time we go through this game loop, you're going to see that line on the screen. And it still doesn't prove that we're actually looping and, and anything meaningful is happening. Um, so I'm going to put a variable in here. We'll just call it end line. And we will, again, go halfway down the screen. Uh, otherwise, we'd have a, a diagonal line, and I just want a straight line. So then the last thing that we need to do is to uh, do the stroke command. The stroke command says, OK, go ahead and you know do that, that pen stroke or, or that line stroke so that we actually draw the line. So now I need to take this variable and actually set it up. And to do that, I'll just add it to our list, set it equal to 0. And then I'm going to increment it by 1 every time we finish. So the first time through the loop, it's going to be 0, so we're going to have a 0 pixel line. And then every time thereafter, it'll increment by 1. And since we're going at 60 frames per second, it'll increment 60 times every second. So we should be able to see this line just grow nicely across the screen. And I believe we have everything set up correctly, so we'll go ahead and give it a try. And there it goes. So now we can see that we are iterating through the loop. And of course, you can take out all this CTX line drawing stuff um, and kind of start on your game. But uh, I told you I wanted to show you two different ways to do this, so let's, let's look at the other way. Many of the browsers kind of looked at this set interval and said, you know, we could allow them to do this, but we kind of think we could do it a little better. So they came up with something that is uh, called request animation frame. The only problem with that is 
not all the browsers did it and they kind of called it something different each. So uh, I kind of googled this problem and I found a blog posting uh, by Eric and I, I'm probably going to get the name last name wrong but Eric Moyer uh, and Eric, sorry if I if I butchered your last name, uh, but Eric had this great blog post with some uh, code to use to kind of get around this problem. Uh, so I have taken a look at this code, and I I really think it's really really good. It just handles everything because it goes through the different vendors looking for the right way to do this, and if it fails to find a way, it has a fallback and so we're we're still going to be able to draw things to the screen which is great and uh, what I can do with this is get rid of set interval and just call my game loop right away and at the bottom of my game loop I'm going to make a call to this request animation frame and give it my game loop function as the parameter so that it knows, okay, I've done all this stuff, now I'm going to call request animation frame, and once it's done setting up its timing, it's going to come back to the uh, game loop and do it all over again and then keep looping. So, now that I have this all written, we can save it, and I can show you that it works. It does work. But I also want to show you something else that this does, which I think is very nice. So if the user is in the middle of playing your game, and then decides that they want to go to another tab, and they kind of forget about your game, well, with the set interval, it would just keep running and running and running. Um, so our, our line is just continually moving. But what's nice about this request animation frame is if I refresh the page and then I instantly go to another tab, it actually stops. It pauses that action. So if you're using a portable device with a battery, um, or even if you're not and you know you're, you just don't need those CPU cycles chugging along, adding to a line that isn't doing anything, um, you know it it stops everything, and when we come back to it it's right back where it started. So if I stop it again, and I come back, it's still there. So I think that that's really nice as well. Uh, so that's the, the method that I prefer. And that's going to wrap up this video. Uh, so I've shown you how to set up your HTML web page, and how to create a JavaScript file, and how to get your variables initialized, and then how to create the game loop, and how to make sure that it loops. So this is really kind of the framework that you need to start creating your own framework for your own game. It gets everything set up and now you're ready to actually dive into the elements that make up your game. Uh, so in the next videos we're going to be diving into the snake game, uh, but for now that'll do it. If you'd like to, please leave a comment. Thank you very much.